Um, climate change um, is quite a reality in Uganda now, and even to the local person who does not know what climate change is, but there are quite visible impacts of climate change in Uganda, and uh, the main ones are to do with uh, persistent droughts and um, uh, floods, increasing the frequency of floods. And uh, in the mountain areas, uh, we have an um, uh, increase in uh, frequency and um, intensity of landslides. If I could talk, um, start with the droughts, um, um, local people and local farmers are, in, uh, are increasingly talking about uh, erratic rainfall, uh, it's unreliable, it no longer, the, the seasons are no longer the way they use it to do. So the rainy season has become shorter and the dry season has become uh, quite longer. And of course this affects uh, the farming because most of the people are doing agriculture and on subsistence level. Um, the drought is also mainly in the areas where we have uh, uh, pastoralists, people who rear animals. And uh, this is uh, in the region we call the country corridor, which runs from the southwestern part of the country through central to the northeast in Karamoja region. It affects quite a number of uh, districts, uh, more than about 50 districts that are affected by uh, this kind of... Uh, so the livelihoods of these pastoralists in the rangelands are really at uh, stake. But also in um, the other areas, uh, uh, the, the droughts, the, the, the rainy seasons have become quite uh, shorter, uh, not the ones they used to, to know. So the planting seasons, they are not sure when they are supposed to plant um, and, uh, and, and all they are like. So this affects uh, crops. Um, um, then... Uh, even when the rains come, uh, the intensity is quite high, uh, very strong, and uh, this has uh, brought about the problem of uh, floods, uh, storms, especially in the northeastern part of Uganda. The Teso region um, is uh, mainly affected, the northern region is affected uh, by floods. So that area that is um, uh, quite, uh, quite flat, and um, these floods, of course, um, uh, come with um, a displacement of people, destruction of crops, lives. Um, and um, in the city, the Kampala city, the floods have also become quite uh, uh, very frequent, just um, a small uh, downpour of rain you have... Uh, uh, floods, of course. Um, this goes also beyond um, uh, uh, what you'd call climate change. It, uh, in the city, it could also be as a result of uh, the uh, poor planning, uh, the informal, the, the, the coming up of uh, uh, many settlements in areas maybe where they should not have been. But definitely, um, the storms have become quite many and floods are many. And um, in the highland areas, uh, you, when uh, you have these storms and the rains, then you have landslides. And uh, especially in the eastern part of uh, Uganda, the Mount Ergon region, where almost now every year we have an occurrence of a landslide that um, uh, has uh, claimed quite very many lives. Uh, the Bududa landslide in 2010 claimed about 100 lives. And now, almost every year in that region, you have landslides. Last year, we had uh, the Kasese flood, uh, which uh, uh, washed away in the, again in the western part of the country, in the Mount Ruenzor region, um, where well, we had a very serious uh, flood, and also in the Bundabuja district, the same area, you have uh, quite a uh, frequency of, uh, of landslides. Um, another issue that we need to talk about is the um, 
um, the retreat in glaciers, the ice on um, Mount Renzoli, uh, which is a mountain uh, uh, across the equator, but uh, it has been having ice caps. But um, since the 1950s, these ice caps have been um, uh, retreating, uh, they have been melting, and um, it's quite also evident that, um, of course, this affects uh, the tourism industry, but also the water, because uh, many rivers that have been, that are uh, coming from this uh, mountain, the western part of the country, um, have become, uh, have less water, they have become uh, relatively drier. So what's happening in Uganda to tackle climate change and make a more climate compatible form of development? In Uganda, uh, the government is um, uh, trying to address climate change through policy and action. Uh, recently, national climate change policy an uh, policy is, um, has been developed and it's already approved by cabinet. So um, there are all efforts to uh, deal with climate change, uh, mainly building climate change resilience uh, by looking at um, issues to do with um, um, uh, immediate action, that is disaster risk uh, reduction, that was disaster risk management, but also long-term adaptation, uh, but also looking at uh, uh, mitigation. So uh, in the policy, a number of uh, strategic sectors have been identified, and uh, one of them is agriculture, uh, being able to look at uh, climate resilience within the agricultural sector, uh, addressing think, issues to do with agricultural value chains um, so that you can have uh, uh, resilient agricultural sector from production to harvesting and processing. And uh, the main issue is um, to deal with um, improved food security, uh, but also because uh, agriculture, agriculture is a mainstay of the economy uh, to, of course, increase um, uh, employment opportunities and um, also to uh, have uh, export. Um, uh, um, another issue, another priority sector is the water sector. Uh, because um, the impact of climate change are clearly is referred within um, the water sector, uh, especially to do with um, water scarcity and water stress. So they are quite, it's one of the priority sectors also in the policy and has to deal with um, um, uh, protecting uh, water catchment areas, uh, watershed management, um, but also to um, um, deal with um, issues to do with um, uh, water access to uh, to people um, and uh, something to do with water harvesting, uh, water harvesting, water storage, and also water for production, so that we can uh, think in terms of climate resilience in terms of irrigation both at the small micro level for the small farmers but also at the large scale uh, for the so and um, also uh, as far as water is concerned uh, of course uh, there are quite many things that come into play things to do with um, sustainable land management which cuts across uh, water and agriculture conservation agriculture issues um, another sector that is quite important is transport because um, uh, transport infrastructure is um, affected by climate change, uh, washing away of roads, uh, bridges, and um, it's about building uh, climate resilient infrastructure, taking into account uh, the impacts, the predicted impacts uh, of climate change in putting up infrastructure so that um, uh, because it is a heavy investment uh, if you have infrastructure that you put up a road for 20 years and then it is washed away in five years or a bridge. And another priority sector is um, energy uh, because um, uh, uh, climate change also affects energy uh, because um, we rely on hydroelectric power and um, uh, with uh, 
the water reduction in waters and, 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 and in the lakes and the rivers, it has in the past affected uh, the generation of electricity. So there is uh, all issues to, to prioritize um, uh, the energy sector in terms so that we can have um, enough electricity, but also renewable energy, alternative kinds of energy, renewable energy. Um, another issue is um, the settlements uh, to do with uh, land use planning and uh, uh, quite, and of course uh, disaster risk uh, uh, management. Another um, area is tourism because um, um, tourism is another important sector for the economy uh, in terms of foreign exchange and uh, the tourism is nature based in terms of wildlife and and uh, there are already indications that climate change is affecting our protected areas uh, first of, first of all um, in the first place because um, um, the population uh, once once there is um, a drought or something like that, the, the, the alternative area that they get are the forests and the protected areas. So they end up encroaching uh, on these areas as the only alternative areas where they can do some sort of cultivation. So tourism and uh, biodiversity conservation uh, is also another priority uh, uh, sector. Um, I think those are the major priority sectors, but uh, almost every sector is covered uh, in the in the policy. Uh, Uganda has um, a long-term uh, development goal, the Vision 2040, uh, which is supposed to, uh, and, and, and the vision is a transformed Uganda from a low-income country to a middle-income country by 2040. And the Vision 20 clearly recognizes uh, climate change as one of the major issues that needs to be addressed. And uh, there are now efforts to integrate uh, climate change in the five-year national development uh, plans for the country. When it comes to implementing those plans and um, actually, you know, action on the ground, um, is it an easy sell to talk about uh, climate change action or is it more effective to come from another entry point, like just good natural resource management or good tourism policy? How easy is it to have the conversation around climate change when you're planning and implementing investments? It's quite a mix because um, uh, there are um, those um, who think some of the issues we talk about addressing climate change are already addressed within uh, the existing policies and natural resource management. And, but and, um, not looking at climate change as a real development issue, looking at it as an environment issue. And the challenge is that up to now, um, although we talk about climate change and environment uh, management, natural resource management, you find that the funds that are allocated to the environment and natural resource sectors uh, is quite, um, um, the quite um, almost one to three percent of the national budget, whether it is at the local level. So basically, um, but this also has to do with, um, uh, we talk about climate change, and um, but uh, there is no evidence on which to best to be able to, um, maybe the, the, the technocrats, uh, those who do the resource allocation, have not yet appreciated uh, that climate change uh, really needs uh, uh, amounts of resources um, in terms of addressing it. And um, so it's quite a bit difficult to estimate how much climate change could cost, yeah, what is the cost maybe of inaction, uh, how, how the impacts would cost an agriculture. There is no quantification and uh, there is no it's quite hard to convince them to allocate substantial resources to to the to address climate change and this is where the CDKN uh, project in Uganda on the econ on assessing the economic impacts of climate change would go a wrong way to provide this quite this evidence base 
And um, of course, climate change has that element of uncertainty. It's, it's also not, um, we cannot tell with precision uh, yet uh, that um, it's going to impact in this kind of way. And the, the models have not been downscaled to quite the local level. But to a local person, uh, the issues or to deal with the unpredictable weather and um, the, this impact is quite real. And um, in terms of agriculture, there are quite a number of efforts um, to conduct research into climate resilient uh, crop varieties and uh, animal breeds uh, by the universities and um, and the, um, uh, the research organizations. And already a number of crops have been uh, piloted and uh, uh, they are um, uh, uh, being uh, grown and more research is, is, is also going on uh, in the agricultural sector to come up with um, climate uh, resilient crops and animal breeds. And um, also issues to do with improvement in uh, the value chains and agricultural value chains so that um, um, because um, climate change would affect uh, the crops up to harvest so that um, uh, the value chains can be quite improved to, to, become, to become resilient. Can you just describe for us, um, you know, from the time that the uh, crop is planted through to the um, harvest and it's taken on for processing, um, what are the different uh, steps along the way that would be taken? Um, choose a crop for me and describe to me if it's coffee or another crop. Um, how would we make that journey from the seed to the coffee cup uh, more climate resilient? I think, well, uh, for example, if we take... Um um, uh, and then an example, about definitely coffee is a perennial crop. It takes a long time on the on the in the field, and um, maybe addressing uh, the, the the coffee value chain has to do with things to do with the uh, maybe when do you harvest, how do you dry the coffee? For example, you could harvest the coffee. Uh, when it is a rainy season and you need to dry it, there have to be mechanisms, for example, to be able to dry the coffee, maybe uh, indoor or having uh, technology to dry the coffee quite uh, quite easily and cleaning the coffee and uh, having warehouses to store the coffee and uh, processing the coffee instead of uh, selling or instead of selling it uh, as uh, in, in its raw form. But if we take an example of uh, other perennial crops, for example, um, if you take, for example, maybe a crop like beans or, or maize, um, first of all, we need, because the rainy season has become shorter, so we need quick maturing, uh, um, quick maturing species, yeah, not say, I think uh, right. varieties uh, of, of those kinds of crops. So if the rain, the rain season, uh, the, 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 the maize was supposed to grow maybe for four months, now we need two to three months. So they need research for uh, developing these kinds of uh, varieties. And then um, there is also the issue of um, when do you plant the crops? Yeah, so um, there is a need uh, for advice on when, for example, uh, forecasting, uh, climate forecasting, being able to tell when the rains are likely to come, how long they are likely to last, and being able to have, um, uh, to advise the farmers when to plant. Um, and um, of course that has to do with um, uh, early warning systems also uh, in terms of this kind uh, of issue. So when do you actually plant? But also there are times when it is quite an, um, the, rainfall, the rainfall could go early. It has to do with the, the way we look at water for production in terms of at the household level, maybe people being able to have enough water to do some um, to, to some irrigation for for these kinds uh, of crops. Then after harvesting, because um, 
post-harvest um, uh, management of some of these crops is also quite very difficult because a lot is wasted when uh, you don't have uh, post-harvesting uh, mechanisms. So uh, the technology for harvesting, storage, yeah, uh, v v value improvement, uh, um, uh, processing, uh, marketing, being able to to know where the market is, information about the markets, uh, and all that, so that the farmers can be able to get uh, value from uh, what they they, they really uh, uh, grow. So that has. Um, something to do with uh, improvement uh, in the value chains of, of these kinds of crops. And uh, it is one of the things that is being uh, emphasised. If I were to ask you a question about um, whether there are different uh, roles, um, impacts and opportunities for women and men. Um, well, um, there is uh, some sort of uh, gender disaggregated roles in as far as um, the social life in Uganda is concerned. Um, because if you take a household, uh, at the household level, you find that um, the women are the ones in charge of um, um, maybe uh, provide household, uh, household issues to do with the uh, cooking, uh, to do with the looking after children. So you find that um, uh, the, the, the vulnerability in terms of the impacts of climate change actually falls more on, on the women uh, because they are the ones um, who are doing the cultivation of the, the crops. You, you talk about water and uh, if you have water scarcity then the women have to look to move long distances to collect the water and uh, the firewood, uh, we rely on firewood going into the bushes to collect the firewood. So the burden falls more on women and you have uh, other things uh, that come into play including sexual, uh, including, um, sexual violence, including rape when they go to collect the firewood to fetch the water. So the burden is actually uh, more on the women and uh, of course. And um, if there is custody of water, the, the women are the ones who look after the children and, uh, you know, uh, so it's quite a, a, a big, um, so to be able to address really climate change, I uh, need to take into account the gender issue very, very, very seriously. And I suppose, um, by contrast, it is quite exciting to think about some of these climate resilient solutions and how mm. they could improve women's lives and make them more of the solution. Yes, and uh, you, you see it's, it's quite a bit complex because if you talk about the roles, the women have more roles, but if you talk about you know, issues to do with resource um, ownership, like the main issue is land. So the land is, Uganda is a patrino society where uh, inheritance goes more to the men. So it's the men who own the land. It's the men who make decisions on how the land is going to be used. If you're talking in terms of maybe well, the, the, the kind of activity, the kind, the way you use the land, whether it is for subsistence, whether it is for income. So the men will take um, the, 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 those activities that are for cash, maybe the cash crops, um, like the coffee, the bananas, like in terms of growing, say if you say you have grown a tree, the tree, even if it is, was planted by the woman, the, the tree is owned by the man. So if, if it matures and you are thinking in terms of having a timber and getting money out of it. So if it goes into the money, then it is the man. If it goes into the work, then it is the woman. So um, having women participating really in uh, decision making on how to come up with these climate resilient uh, issues, um, having a positive uh, policy in terms of uh, equality, gender equity, uh, access to resources, access to opportunities. In some societies, if you talk about education, the boy child is favored more than the girl child. And so it's quite really, the gender issue is quite uh, important. But in Uganda, we have positive laws, um, policies that are now going into 
uh, engineering, uh, agriculture, natural resource management, where you have uh, more participation of women, we have affirmative action in terms of um, even um, the politics, you know, having more women in uh, uh, decision-making positions. Are you an optimist or a pessimist when it comes to climate compatible development? Um, do you think that uh, climate change action and poverty reduction and development can really go hand in hand and both be fully accomplished? If I start from um, home, at the uh, micro level, at the household level, there is no way you can talk about um, in Uganda. There is no way you can talk about reducing poverty without addressing climate change because the people are relying on rain-fed agriculture. So if you're talking about rain-fed agriculture, then depending on agriculture for food, for income, yeah, as a livelihood, definitely climate change and, and, and poverty have to go hand in hand. But even then, um, if we are talking about um, um, uh, eradication of poverty, what are the, the issues we are looking at? We are looking at food, we are looking at water, we are looking at shelter, we are looking at um, maybe education, we are looking at health. So if you talk about food, you are talking about agriculture. It depends on climate, so we have to address issues to do with the climate. If you are talking about water, water is an ecosystem um, uh, service that um, is affected by uh, climate change. Uh, maybe if you talk about even energy, part of the energy, like in Uganda, is uh, hydroelectric power. You are talking about biomass energy, which, of course, are, is affected by climate change. If you talk about, um, what else did I talk about? Um, health, climate change, the, the, the heat waves, the, 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 you are talking about the disasters, the diseases yeah, that are going to come up. The, for example, my increase in incidences of malaria, waterborne diseases as a result of floods. And so if you talk about um, maybe trade, uh, you, you need infrastructure, the roads. So basically, I, I don't see a way in which you can be able to re reduce poverty, say, in developing countries without looking at climate change resilience. It's, and um, the future of, um, of energy, the, 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 the fossil fuels, leave alone having greenhouse gas emissions, they, are, they will run out anyway. So you need to talk about issues to do with renewable energy technologies, clean energy technologies, uh, and all they like. So it's, the, the, there is no middle way. It, 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 we, we have to tackle the, all the issues together because even those can, even those areas which are developed and um, uh, the climate change could uh, take them backwards if it is not uh, quite addressed. It could bring more poverty, more misery, even in the areas where you have uh, um, like, um, where you have development, because if you talk about island states and coastal areas and most of the development maybe in Europe, in most of these areas, is concentrated around coastal areas. If these uh, are submerged, then you have uh, quite a, a serious issue to, to address. And are you ultimately an optimist then? Is that what you're telling me? Do you mm. think we can do it? Do you think um, that the political leaders and society behind them can really get to grips with this in time? Well, um, addressing climate change is um, really quite a challenge because you have a mix of interests. You have business people and uh, private sector, they are, they, they, they are interested in profit and uh, unless really you have them, they, their profits threatened or their businesses threatened, they, they, they wouldn't think otherwise because you, for example, you have people in the dealing in oil and uh, big businesses, you're talking about, about well, politics, you're talking about jobs. So it's quite, um, quite a complex issue. So you have the politicians who are the leaders and who are supposed to guide policy and they are thinking in terms of the next election. So they are not going to, and climate change, addressing climate change is long term and 
So there is a balance of uh, many of these um, kinds of things. But the real optimism, optimism is about uh, building awareness among the population. So if you have that critical mass that is quite aware of, uh, of what is befalling them, then if uh, maybe they decided that they are not going to consume commodities that are not produced in a sustainable way, then maybe the, 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 the private sector will think in another way. They will have to, to, to kind of join. So if the population is aware about uh, what is befalling them in terms of uh, climate change risks, then the politicians will have no choice other than uh, going that way. So the issue is about awareness and building that kind uh, of critical mass. But even at the international level, it has been done before, and I think we, we can have uh, something and move forward. If you talk about the, say, the Montreal Protocol, about uh, action on ozone, uh, for the, 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 the world came together to address this kind of problem. So I think the most important issue is the science uh, to provide evidence uh, that uh, climate change is a real issue and uh, not addressing it is a very serious risk. And uh, then the others will be able to, 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 to go into that kind of issue because maybe there is that skepticism uh, among some people that uh, maybe climate change is a hoax. There is that still that school of thought that Maybe climate change is a hoax. I have heard um, um, some scientists saying, oh, you know, in the evolution of time, this, some of these things have taken place and this variability, the ice ages and all they like. And for me, my argument is that the way we talk about climate change is that we are talking about climate change in relation to a human being, human welfare. So if you take us back that these things happened uh, before when human life was not there, I think uh, it's not quite uh, relevant because we think about uh, climate change in relation to a human being, in relation to uh, human welfare.